everyone and welcome to Environment Grenada, a program that is geared to educating each and every one of us on environmental issues being currently faced, not just in Grenada, but throughout the region and even internationally. For today's program, I have two gentlemen with me and we'll be discussing what is called the LBS protocol. LBS means land-based sources of marine pollution. Now, Grenada being the island that it is, the beautiful one, we are completely and totally surrounded by water. So anything that affects our water environment is something that we need to pay attention to. So I will introduce Mr. Christopher Corbin, as well as Mr. Vincent Sweeney. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here and welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. Can you both just briefly introduce yourselves and give us an idea as to what it is you do in terms of environmental protection? Well, I am a program officer with the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP. It's their regional seas office, which is based in Kingston, Jamaica and I have direct responsibility for the LBS protocol wow. and for development and implementation of projects and activities to support it. Okay, okay. Mr. Sweeney? Well, I'm also a UNEP, or United Nations Environment Program employee, mm -hmm. but I'm based in St. Lucia at okay. the Caribbean Environmental Health Institute, and my responsibilities are as regional project coordinator for a Caribbean, 13 country Caribbean project. Wow related to integrating watershed and coastal area management and that's being funded by the Global Environment Facility of which Grenada is in fact one of the participating countries. Okay great and I know both of you gentlemen are here for a short time tell us why you're here why are you in Grenada at this point in time what's the purpose of your visit? Well we are here for a, a two-day workshop which was being organized uh, by our partners here in, in Grenada, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of, of Agriculture, to raise awareness on the LBS protocol and to identify some opportunities for implementation, some activities that could be done in Grenada uh, with support of UNEP and the IWCAM project to support their process of hopefully formally ratifying or signing on to this important legal agreement. Um, in reading up <clears throat> on the LBS protocol, I came across uh, what they call the Cartagena Convention. And I know it's all related. Yeah. So Mr. Corbin, if you could just take us back to the Cartagena Convention and lead us on to the LBS protocol, so at least we could make a linkage. Yes, right. definitely. Well, well, UNEP is the United Nations Environment Program, and they're really the body of the United Nations that deals with environment, not only nationally, but throughout the, the entire globe. What was recognized very early was the importance of, of seas and the need to protect seas, like the Caribbean Sea. And therefore, one of the early initiatives was towards the development of programs within different regions of the world to protect their particular seas, and the Caribbean Sea being one of them. In 1983, all the countries of the wider Caribbean, both the island states, but also Central America, Venezuela, Colombia, got together to develop what is still the only regional environmental agreement for protecting the Caribbean Sea. Okay. Uh, since it was formally done in, in Cartagena, Colombia, it was termed the Cartagena the Convention, exactly. Uh, but it, it really is a landmark agreement. It's where all the governments got together and decided we needed to do something to protect the Caribbean Sea. Okay, okay so how now does that tie in or lead us to the LBS protocol? Good question. And, and what happened was that when we came up with the Cartagena Convention, we said, okay, that's the first step. Now, what do we need to deal with that are the major priorities for the Caribbean? Okay. And two things came up. One was protection of our biodiversity. And here I mean our coral reefs, our mangroves. Mm -hmm. And the second one was protection of the environment from pollution. So the LBS protocol was developed in 1999. So far, though, only six countries have actually formally signed it and said, well, yes, this is something we want to commit to. And we need three more countries to come on board 
to have this protocol, what said, become international law. So it's not yet international law. Okay, okay. So can you tell us who are those six countries that have already signed on? Well, the, the first two were Trinidad and Tobago and Panama, and they signed, you know, at least six or seven years ago. And then we had a lull. No one was signing on. And I'm happy to say within the last three years, we've really built some momentum. So we had the governments of St. Lucia, of Belize, of France, and more recently, the United States of America. So now I think we have a momentum going, and I think it's very timely that Grenada now has really shown a strong interest in the LBS protocol. Mr. Corbin, just to continue on um, the LBS protocol, again, just a reminder, LBS standing for Land-Based Sources of Marine Pollution. What are the main objectives of the LBS protocol? And I take it since you're here in Grenada, that yeah. we're trying to get Grenada on board with it. Exactly. Correct? So what are the main objectives of well, the LBS protocol? It, it, it's first good to mention that the protocol is, is a legal agreement. Okay. Within it, it normally has a set of objectives, as you've mentioned, but also a set of obligations in terms of what the government commits to. Okay. In terms of the objectives, they're really quite simple. One is to reduce pollution from land-based sources. Um, some examples. Some examples. Solid waste, garbage. Uh, sewage coming from, from domestic, from hotels, from industry, controlling oil. In fact, we just went on, on a field trip and noticed the number of garages that do, you know, locally? locally, yes. Ah. And we saw that, we realized there's a potential source of pollution coming from, from land-based activities. So the idea is to look at ways as to how can we reduce this pollution, how can we minimize it so that we minimize the impact not only on the environment but also on human health. Okay. The second main objective behind the protocol is where the regional cooperation comes in and that's to exchange the information. Especially for small islands, sometimes the impacts come from outside. And we need to look at ways as to how can we share experiences, how can we share lessons learned, and how can we get a better idea as to what is the state of the marine environment and the Caribbean Sea, because it affects all of us. You mentioned, well, just for my own, well, all of our benefits, uh, in terms of some examples of land-based pollutants. Mm -hmm. I take it um, chemicals used in avocultu avocultu sorry, would obviously be another yes. example as yes. well. We, we did a study that tried to identify what were the major sources of pollution affecting the environment from land-based activities. Right. The number one was untreated sewage coming from, from everywhere. Right. And that was the major point source, so the one that we could identify coming from outfalls and from pipes right. and so. Mm -hmm. And the other main one came from, from agricultural runoff. So the use of fertilizers and pesticides. When you have heavy rainfall mm -hmm. and you don't have proper land use practices, a lot of that ends up as sediment and runoff into the marine environment. Government has to play a role in, in getting this yes. protocol um, implemented and passed and adhered to as well. Yes. Is there a significant cost to the government to do that? There is a cost. I would dare say there is a greater cost <laughs> if nothing is done. There, it, it's, it's, it's reality. I think what, what happens now is that there's a greater recognition that the environment and keeping our environment in a certain way is critical for sustainable development. And we've, and we've heard a lot about these deep development issues, but when you think about pollution, it affects fisheries, it affects human health, it affects tourism, and there's a cost to that. And it's normally better to be more preventative and look for measures that you can stop the problem occurring in the first place. And this is really what the LBS protocol seeks to promote, to put in place measures. And in some cases, it's new laws, new right. policies. In other cases, it's change of behavior. You know, a lot of public education and awareness to stop people littering and then put in place those systems that will prevent the problem from occurring in the first place. Okay. Okay. Mr. Sweeney, how do you or what do you think Grenada needs to do to get on board and what is the process, what is the actual process for us to um, play an active role? The process I think has already started, fortunately, which is, which is why we are, we are here in Grenada. Okay. There is already a level of interest expressed by the technocrats, at, at least, the senior technocrats in, in Grenada um, to, to actually see something happen. And like most of the other Caribbean countries, they are very much involved in the discussions on a regional basis as to what our problems are and how can we collectively solve them. Um, what we need to do now is to move it beyond 
us talking among ourselves as technocrats and get, get others involved at different levels. One level, of course, is a policy level because ultimately, as Chris mentioned, it's going to cost something. And, in, and beyond the cost, there, there are going to be legal implications. If you sign an agreement, you're, you're, making, you're taking on certain obligations. You may need to amend certain policies or legislation and so on. And you need some commitment of resources. So we really need to get the, the policymakers involved. In addition, there are a number of stakeholders. And we use that word so loosely. But, but basically, there are a lot of people who stand to benefit or to suffer as a result of yeah. either doing something or not doing something. something. And therefore, what we are trying to do, in fact, through this program, is to, to let people understand you know, what this is all about and, and to recognize that it's not something that is up in the clouds that is only meaningful to, to those people in the environment division. I'm it's meaningful to everybody. Because I think sometimes we probably need to bring it down yeah. to everyone's level. So how would it benefit the everyday person? Well, let's look at tourism, for example. Um, there are a number of people who rely on tourism for their daily living. Um, for